All right, so this week we're going to be taking a look at my Grail watch. And let's face it, I'm not going to spend $10,000 on a watch, so mine didn't cost that much money. Um, but I think it's a great watch, and so this week we're going to be taking a look at the Citizen Nighthawk. Check it out. All right, so this week we're going to be talking about the Citizen Nighthawk, which for me it was uh, kind of my grail watch when I first started uh, looking into, you know, like what, what watches I wanted to start buying. Um, and, you know, $200 for a lot of people is not a lot to spend on a watch. For me it is. Uh, that's kind of the upper limit of, of where I can go. Um, for me, what I was really looking for in a grail was a, a number of things. Um, like for one of the, the first was a... Um, a GMT function, like being able to track a second time zone. Because actually, I live in uh, Japan most of the time, but all of my friends and family are back in America, so it's really handy to be able to have both Japan time and uh, U.S. time uh, available really quick. So that was one of mine. Um, if you talk about like what my ultimate grail would be, which is something I'll never get, but like I really like the look of, um, say, like a, a Rolex Explorer Two with the GMT. Um, complication on it. I think that's a really cool watch and, and maybe that's something I can, um, I don't know, if I won the lottery or something, uh, would look at. But other than that, it's not really something I'd ever get, I don't think, because I would never spend that much money on a watch. Um, but the, you know, Citizen Nighthawk, it, it really has kind of everything I need. For me, it's, it's kind of the, the perfect watch. Um, but yeah, this is, this is it here. And let's go ahead and get some close-up shots. And I'll talk about why I really like this watch. And um, yeah, well, I think you know, one of the things that the um, Nighthawk has is it has this little slide rule bezel on it, a little flight computer bezel. Um, no one seems to know how to use those, and I'm still kind of learning, but I, I was playing around with it, and it's actually kind of cool. So I'll do one quick demonstration of how to do like a conversion on that, um, because you can actually do a lot of cool stuff with that, even if you're not a pilot, uh, and I'm not a pilot. So, um, But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get into some close-ups and look more closely at some of the, the things about the Nighthawk and talk about... Uh, why it, I think it's I think it's worthy to be called a, a, a Grail watch for someone who's on an affordable or who's, who's looking uh, for affordable watches and on a tight budget. Okay, so here's the basic uh, dimensions and things on it. It's a 42 millimeter case, 13 millimeters thick, uh, 200 meter water resistance, which is great. Um, I mean, for a pilot's watch, um, that's just amazing. It's, it's the same as a lot of um, you know dive watches will have the same 200 meter water resistance. So. You don't have to worry about getting it wet at all, and with the stainless steel band that it comes on, uh, that's also completely waterproof. Um, but one of the things that I really love about it is the Eco Drive movement, which I think, you know, from a technological standpoint and from like a, a practical standpoint, it's probably the, the best movement you can get. I mean, you know, say what you want about an uh, automatic mechanical movement, they're beautiful, um, they're just incredible pieces of uh, machinery and work, but. Um, this is a movement that will recharge itself uh, with any light source uh, and has up to a six month power reserve on it. Uh, so, you know, it, it basically you never have to worry about changing the battery. Um, you know, you can keep it out in the sun for a little bit and then shove it away in a box for six months and open it up and it'll still have the, you know, the correct time, uh, date, and everything. Um, so, that's just like, I mean, that's, that's like so perfect, I think. I mean, you, you don't have to worry about changing the battery. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, getting the, the mechanical, me uh, mechanical mechanism uh, retuned um, or serviced or anything like that. Uh, it just keeps working, and it keeps, like, almost absolutely perfect time. So um, great feature there. Uh, it has the GMT, which, again, uh, that was one of my requirements when I was looking for a, a great you know, watch that I wanted to wear every day, I needed to have that second time zone. Uh, and then it has this slide rule, uh, pilot slide rule bezel on it, which, uh, again, at first I thought that wasn't going to be that practical, but the more I uh, figure out how to use it, um, you know, if you're looking at this for like a traveler's watch, which, you know, I, I do travel a fair amount, uh, and you want to convert between, you know, kilograms and pounds or miles and kilometers, it can do that. It can do a lot of uh, conversions on the fly. Um, without having to take out your phone or something like that. And it's kind of fun to use too. So we'll go into, you know, maybe a little bit more detail about how to use that 
um, uh, in another segment of the video. But that kind of gives you an idea of the, the basic functions of it. Let's go ahead and uh, get a quick wrist shot and you can see what it looks like. So putting it on, uh, it does have a double clasping or double uh, securing mechanism there. The clasp has uh, kind of two clicks there and then it's on and it's secured. I have this sized for my wrist, which again, it's a little bit over a seven inch uh, wrist. And um, you can see it doesn't look that huge. I think it looks really, it's a really good size. It's not, um, it's not like a giant watch, but then at the same time, it's, it's easy to read uh, and it has really good wrist presence and I, because there's the, the dial takes up so much of it, um, kind of maybe uh, has a little bit sleeker look to it, I think. Uh, getting a little bit more of a close-up here, um, you can see the, the functions. Um, the hands are very thick. They have a nice uh, loom on them. They're very easy to read. And even though the watch face is really busy, uh, you can still see everything. Uh, and the band, again, is very solid, um, very good band. Uh, got a signed clasp there. Uh, so overall, just uh, really feels feels really nice once you got it on and uh, sized up and uh, put on there properly. Um, but back to the dial, you know, let's look at that uh, a little bit more closely. Um, again, it's a, it's a really busy dial, um, but it is actually once you you know what everything's there, everything has a purpose. Nothing is decorative, uh, and it's it's all laid out really thoughtfully and very easy to read. Uh, so this knob is for the slide rule there on that side. Um, Let's see, and you can see that it's got kind of a texture on it. It's got a, a good grip so that they're really easy to grab onto. Um, here's the main uh, crown, and it's a screw down crown, which helps maintain the 200 meter water resistance. It's also got a cool uh, signed crown. Uh, we've got the Nighthawk logo on it. Uh, and yeah, so you can see it's uh, 13 millimeters thick, um, which I think is just a really good size for it. The clasp is a butterfly clasp. Uh, which is very solid um, and yeah it just uh, clips very securely into place again with the citizen signed clasp on it and yeah but just overall it's, it's a really interesting watch to look at uh, the closer you get the more you see of it but even from uh, a distance it looks uh, pretty neat as well. well let me go ahead and explain how the um, second time zone works so you can see uh, that sort of half moon scale in the middle that's got 24 numbers on it in both white and red. Uh, and you'll see there's also a fourth hand that has kind of two little airplanes on it, a white one and a red one. So when the white one is over the scale, it's telling the time on the white scale. So in this case, it's looking, it's reading 7. So that would be 7 a.m. Uh, in my second time zone, which is Japan. You'll notice that as the white hand continues to move across, when it gets off of the scale, when it goes past the 12, the red one's going to be coming back on and it's uh, longer, so it will hit the red section of the scale. So then it will continue to tell the time uh, in the afternoon, so from uh, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, and then the white is in the, the a.m. So it's actually really kind of a cool way to, to do it and it's really easy to read once you uh, get the hang of it. And so that's, that's one, again, one of the, the best features for me. Um, everything else, again, is really well laid out. That's got a nice date window that's easy to read, too. Um, let's get a loom shot, too, now and, and take a look. Uh, and when you go with the lights out, it's kind of cool. It's like, it looks like a whole different watch now. So now it's a very simple watch. You just got your, uh, your hands and your hour markers, and it's cool that the 12 and the 6 of the whole number is loomed. Um, it's a nice blue loom, which is a little bit different than the usual green, so I really like it, and it seems to last pretty much the whole night through. All right, we'll go ahead and give a demonstration of the slide rule here. And we're going to convert uh, kilometers to miles. So we're going to convert 100 kilometers to miles and see what that is. And so what we're going to do, um, we'll get a close-up shot of it here. But basically on the inner dial, there's a little KM and then a red arrow right by the 12. And so we're going to move the 10, uh, slide the number 10 over to that, which will, which will mean 100. So we're going to add a zero. Um, so you can see the KM now, the 10 is now on the KM. And so now we go look for uh, the STAT, which is for statuette miles. So that's uh, what we use in the US. Uh, and that now is going to read what the conversion is. So in this case, it's 62, about 62, uh, just a little bit over, which is actually the, the correct conversion for 100 uh, miles. It's just a hair over 62. I mean, 100 kilometers is just a little bit over uh, 62 miles. And so you'll see there's a whole bunch of these little red triangles on there that are for different conversions. And they all work the same way. You line up uh, your number that you want to convert from with one, and then you go find uh, the triangle that has what you want to convert to. 
So one final look at the uh, the night watch here, or night, uh, sorry, <laughs> night hawk here. And we can take uh, just a look. Again, um, I think it's just a really classy looking dial. Um, it, it looks really complicated, but again, everything is functional. Everything serves a purpose. Um, with the included uh, stainless steel strap, I think it does look very kind of uh, machine-like. It has sort of a very, um, I don't know, mechanical f look to it. Um, I, I think I actually prefer it on like a leather strap, and so what I'm kind of looking for is maybe a nice tan or dark brown leather strap to put it on. Uh, I've tried it with a couple of other ones, and I think it looks really good with that too. But uh, in the future, we're going to do a, a strap review and check out a couple of different ones. So you can look forward to that. But let's go ahead and wrap up and finish up the review. All right, guys. So that has been my uh, review of the Citizen Nighthawk. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, sometime in the future, I'm going to do uh, just a video looking at some different strap options for it because uh, i got a bunch of straps I've been trying on with it, trying to find one that I really like. Um, so I'll do a video of that, and maybe you can see that too. Um, in the meantime, uh, if anybody's watching out there, I'd love to hear what your grail is or... Um, yeah, what you think of the Nighthawk, if you think it's worthy of, of being called a grail. Um, but yeah, post that down in the comments. Uh, and until then, we'll, we'll see you next time. And um, thanks again for watching. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe uh, if any of this interests you. And hopefully, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week.